Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard and I'm gonna be showing you my Phantom Blaster Dragon deck profile updated with uh, new support from DBT03. This one was a little tricky to figure out since there's gonna be a lot better support for blasters uh, coming set four and then also for DBT05 or whatever it's called, set five coming out. So looking forward to that as well. But as of right now, this is what I have going for my Keter Sanctuary Shadow Paladin standard deck. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. Starting off with the ride deck. Starter is full bow, you know, gotta have the, the, the right ride line. Uh, when rolled upon, if you went second, you know, draw. Uh, Blaster Javelin. So Blaster Javelin skill is when this is rolled upon by Blaster Dark, you look at the top card of your deck, Call to rear is rest if it's a unit and you discard it if it's not a unit. So spoiler alert, there's no orders in this deck, so you're gonna call it. Uh, second skill is during your turn, if you have a Vanguard Blaster, gets 2K. So it's a, uh, you know, it's a 10K booster or beater. So it's nice to have. Next up, Blaster Dark, the, the avatar himself. Uh, when this is placed on Vander Rear, you kind of lost one, retire another rear guard, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, retire it, and this gets drive plus one. Um, the only time I really feel like you ever get the retire off is if you're playing against Bruce and you retire uh, the starter, you know, the one they call out from riding the, after they ride the great one. So, but um, it's still good to have twin drive. Second skill is continuous during your turn. If your rear guard was retired this turn, this gets 5K. So it's a 15K beat stick. So in standard, 15K beat sticks are really good. So definitely want to run those. So finally for our ride deck, our ride chain, we have Phantom Blaster Dragon. Phantom Blaster Dragon skill is when this is placed on Vanguard Circle, you choose a card with Blaster in its name from your soul and you call it to rear. So that means when your Persona ride, you can call itself the other copy of itself from the soul. But when you do his first ride, you're probably gonna pull out Blaster Dark for those beat sticks. Um, or you could call out Javelin as a booster. So I like the fact that when you ride it, it still lets you fill your board, which is really helpful. Second skill is act once per turn, count plus one, retire three rear guards. Choose two of your opponent's rear guards, you retire them. This gets 10k and a crit. So field control is nice. You lose three units, but making your opponent lose two, especially in standard, where I feel like not a lot of decks um, have a lot of board replenishing. Um, it's still really good for the most part. Um, the extra 10k in the crit, it's also nice pressure to have as well. And also you have units in the deck that count as two for retires, so you don't have to worry about sacrificing too much of your board. But that's it for the, uh, the ride chain there. Let's go ahead and go on into the main deck, starting off with our other three copies of Phantom Blaster Dragon because Persona Ride, and then it also has that skill that when you ride it, you get to call a blaster. So filling your board and getting the Persona Ride off is really nice. So going on to the grade threes, I decided I was gonna go the Eraser Rod Angel route. So what Eraser Rod Angel does is when it's placed on rear, you Soul Blast one, look at the top card of your deck. If it's a unit, call it to rear in the same column as this unit. So I really like this card, not only just because you play it, you Soul Blast one, boom, you get another unit so that you can maybe retire it for Phantom Blaster Dragon skill. I also like it for the fact that when you ride, Blaster Dark on top of Javelin. If the top card of your deck that you reveal is a Razor Rod, you can trigger its effect off and get yourself another unit, which is pretty cool. Um, the only downside I would say to this card is that, yeah, if you pull out a trigger, you pull out a trigger, but you know, having a unit on the board to retire is better than having to lose hand. You know, my personal opinion on that. So I like the three of Razor Rod. Uh, lastly, for grade ones, I am teching in one copy of Fasado, um, just because of space and also because I feel like once it gets off its hit once, it did its job for the whole game. So what Fasado does is when this unit's attack hits, you counter charge and soul charge one. So it can even hit a rear guard and it still goes off. You get your counter charge and your soul charge. The second skill is also that it can't be chosen by your opponent's card effect. So it means it can't be imprisoned, can't be retired, you know, it can't be chosen. So anything that has to do with not choosing, like it, something that targets the circle or the column, yeah, it's gone. But it's got like a nice little uh, resist thing going on. But the one copy is working fine. I would rather just see more razor rods 
just to fill the board rather than like, you know, counter charge support. But deck's gonna be different after set four. So this is just kind of like a temporary uh, slot right there. Next up is great twos. The other three copies of Blaster Dark, uh, it's our 15K beater. So that's one of the main reasons why. Second reason is because if you really wanna go into the field, like board control, you can use its skill that when it's placed on rear, kind of blast one, retire one of your rear guards, and you choose one of your opponent's rear guards and you retire it. So you can just kind of keep on blowing up your opponent's board. But in addition, it gets an extra drive check, meaning if you get an over trigger, this now on the rear guard circle has twin drive. So that's another thing to take in consideration when you use Blaster Dark's uh, skill when you place it. But it's mostly there for the, if you retired this turn, this gets 5K, you know, a little 15K uh, beater. Next up, new card. I'm running two copies of Magic of Appreciation, not a full. Not a full skill is when you drive check a trigger, you put a card from your hand into the soul and you draw a card. So the reason I'm running not a full is just because if you call it out randomly through like a razor rod or through um, like, you know, Karen, if you have it on the board and it's kind of just sitting there, you can still at least use its effect to, you know, put a card from your hand in your soul to keep your soul replenished. Cause you do, you have a lot of cards in this deck that use soul like Maka and Racer Rod, but also Phantom Blaster Dragon removes a blaster from your soul every time you ride. So all things just to keep it in consideration. Nanafold just feels like it's the most consistent way of keeping your soul going and still getting something out of it. Um, there's a grade two angel that I was also kind of playing around with where when you place it, you pick a card from your drop, put it in your soul. It does this thing where you try to like, look at the top few cards, add something to your hand if it has the same name as the thing, card you put in the soul, but the rest go to bottom. Um, I was just kind of like, it just wasn't really working out for me for if I would look at the top and there was like three triggers, it's like, oh, I missed out on those triggers. But uh, I feel like Nanafold is just kind of more consistent in the fact that if you just need like one extra soul for next turn, it can help you get that if you get your triggers. So I like Nanafold for that. And it's also a witch, so it kind of feels like a, or it's not a witch, but it looks like a witch. So it feels like it fits the aesthetic. And lastly for grade twos, Darkness Maiden, Maka. So Maka's skill is when it's placed on the rear guard circle. If you have a Vanguard Blaster, you um, get 5K. So even if you just place it, boom, 15K beater. But additionally, you can Soul Blast one, retire another rear guard, look at five from the top of your deck, choose a grade one or less, call it to rear and shuffle your deck. So it's mostly there just to retire rested units like Karen, just to kind of help you not have like a rested unit on the board that can't really boost. Um, but it's also just a deck thing, just so you, know, you can pull non-triggers out of your deck. So Maka's a really great card, run it at four. It's its own 15K beater like Blaster Dark is, so even more helpful for the deck. Speaking of Charon, that's our next grade one. Four copies of Black Sage Charon. When it's placed on rear guard circle, if you have Vanguard Blaster, rest this unit. Look at the top card of your deck. If it's a unit, call it. And at the end of your turn, you retire the unit called. So usually what you do is you'll rest Charon, whatever you call. If both Charon and the unit called are going to be targets for Bla Phantom Blaster Dragon to be retired. So you don't have to worry about that second part about retiring the unit at the end of the turn. But uh, Karen is just a free call. What I also really like about Karen is that it says you may call it, meaning you rest it, look at top card as a trigger. You can still leave it on the top of your deck, and that way you know that the top card of your deck is a trigger. The same goes for a razor rod as well. You don't have to call the card when you look at the top to call it. You can choose to leave it there. Um, so this kind of has like a little bit of like deck manipulation as well, which I do like about it. So lastly, well, not lastly, we still got a few more Crate 1s to go through. Next up is Witch of Pandering Brunner. If you have a Vanguard Blaster, this counts as two when you would be retiring your rear guards. So that's it. It's got 5k power and its only job is to be a retire target. So we want to run four of it. Super easy peasy. Lastly, we got another two copies of Blaster Javelin. It's a... Uh, it's mostly there just because we need grade ones in the deck as call targets. And besides 
Um, Brunner and Caron, there's the PG, and you don't really want to call the PG. So Javelin's just another call target. It's a 10k beat stick, basically, that can boost. So it works out for the deck, it helps out. There's gonna be a way better grade one coming out in set four, but for now, we'll work with the Blaster Javelin. And we got our PGs, Aegismere Dragon. It's the better PG from the trial deck ones. It's the one where if you have two or more in your hand, you have to discard, but if you have one or less in hand, when you place it down, you do not have to discard for the PG effect. So, Better PG, run the better PG if you can. <laughs> and now we're on to triggers. So starting off, we got Armatanoa, the uh, got Armatanoa. So Armatanoa's skill is when you drive check it, you get the additional effect that your rear guards can perform drive checks as well. So I kind of talked about earlier with how Blaster Dark, if you swing and use his first skill, it gets an extra drive check, now you have twin drives. So that can be important when you are able to get Armo to Noah, and also because it's over trigger the format. If you use Karen or um, Eraser Rod, you know, you can know the over triggers there and just plan on getting its effect off and setting up your turn that way. All right, so next up, we're running the new critical trigger, Blade Feather Dragon. Um, it's another way to help you fill up your soul if you need to for skills. But for the most part, it's just because it's a crit with the skill. It skills at the end of the battle that it boosted. You put this into your soul, choose one of your other units, and it gets 2k. So you could use this to maybe kind of fix up some numbers. Um, like if you're uh, swinging with, I don't know, if you're trying to swing at a rear guard that's 10k and you want an extra 2k to give to like Charon or something and you want to make like a column to fit those numbers, that's something you can do. Um, there's little ways you can do to fix the numbers with this deck, but for the most part, you're using it just to fill up the soul, and also it's a crit with the skills, so run the crits with the skills. Uh, speaking of crits, we're running four more copies of White Fang Witch Dismas, so it's just your vanilla crit. So we're running eight crit in this deck just because the deck doesn't really have a lot of consistency that makes you feel like it can keep up with a lot of the more meta things in standard. So you run crits so that you can just beat face with crits. Um, ideally, you'd be running like, you know, 11 crit, but you know, we can't do that legally in tournament format because you only run up to eight crits. But uh, that's why we're running eight crits is because PBD gains a crit. And if you can double crit for game, Easy peasy. That's how we win games in Vanguard. So, eight crits for Phantom Blaster Dragon. Uh, following up, I am running draw triggers. So we have three copies of Exalting Knight, Efred or F, Efred, Efred. Um, draws over fronts. Why are we doing draws instead of fronts? Because you want to be able to create a board, and being able to hit draw triggers either when you drive check them or when you damage check them to fill your hand gives you more resources to fill your board. Um, also, if I feel like if you're gonna get the persona right off, the front trigger kind of like applies to itself. And also the fact that, you know, I feel like your front row is doing pretty okay for the most part since your opponent's kind of trying to guard your uh, your vanguard, wasting resources in that to avoid the extra crit. Um, and also drive checking draws is just nice because you get to draw into PGs and draw into more cards that help you guard and defend yourself. Um, if you want to do fronts, you can do fronts. I feel like that could work just fine. I just do like the draws at least for Phantom Blaster Dragon because it lets you get more resources as opposed to just kind of being stuck with, um, you know, a limited amount of hand. So personal choice, but we're going with the draws for my deck. And finally, for the triggers, the four heals, the circling sorceress. Uh, it's a heal trigger, so we gotta run four of it. So that's what we're running for our Phantom Blaster Dragon deck. Um, to kind of give an idea of what I would think the go-to plan is with this deck, if you don't really know how the PB deck, PBD deck is supposed to really go, I would say your go-to cards that you're really looking for when you get started are Karen, and 
the Razor Rod. Uh, these are the cards that are going to fill your board without killing your board. So these are the cards you kind of want to look for when you're trying to set up that first turn. So Razor Rod is obviously you Soul Blast 1, you look at the top card of your deck. Um, hopefully it's not a Phantom Blaster Dragon, but even if it is, you can just retire them off with PBD skill to blow up your opponent's board and get an extra crit. So second one is Charon. So Charon is basically you rest it. Um, let's get that out of there. You rest it and you look at the top card of your deck. Oh cool, it's a card that's actually good. You call Maka. Maka also has a skill. When it's placed on rear, you can Soul Blast 1, retire a rear guard, retire that Charon, and you can call something out. So those are just simple things that you can do. That's basically kind of like what the go-to. You're either going to do Razor Rod, and then Charon, and then after you kind of set up your board, you would go into Maka, get rid of your own board, call something else, kind of deck thinning. Your targets are obviously going to hopefully be another Charon, because then you can just do it again. Just rest, look at top deck, call something. It's hopefully going to be that, like, that's the ceiling of consistency, but you're always going to have moments where your top card is going to be a PG and then you have to call it, you know, kill it off. So there's highs and lows with this deck, but for the most part, if you want, like, just kind of like something budget um, to kind of just play around with and you just really like the aesthetic of Shadow Paladin, it, this is what my go-to would be, at least. I know there's also a version of this where you play Lagreal, um, same concept where you just use Charon and other cards to help you fill your board, and then you use Lagreal to rest your board to then, you know, get those additional drive checks, but that's kind of more of a set four-ish build that's going to be coming up in the near future. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If uh, if there's any other D-series deck profiles you're looking forward to, let me know, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.